Good morning and welcome as we gather to celebrate our Mass on this second Sunday in ordinary time. For tens of thousands of years, Aboriginal people have called this island of Lutawita, Tasmania, home. As traditional custodians of country, they lived in harmony with the land, utilising her resources sustainably. With the cleanest air in the world, ancient rainforests, snow-capped mountains, wild rivers and pristine beaches, we live in one of the most beautiful places in the world. Let us thank the elders and all Palawa of the past for looking after this country so well. Let us pay also a respect to the elders of the present who continue to care for this land, its waterways, and we give thanks for all that country means. Come to the waters. Come to the feast. Labors come to the waters. All you who have no money come to the feast. For this is life, the waters of the Jordan. For this is life, the waters of new birth. For this is life, the waters that renew you. Oh, come to the feast. Oh, come to the feast for everyone who sings. Come to the waters, fear me and share the riches. Come to the feast and everyone who mourns. Come to the waters, now is an end of sadness. Come to the feast for this is life streams of joy and gladness for this is life the rain that brings you joy for this is life the waters that restore you oh come to the feast oh come to the feast in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit the peace of the Lord be with you always. As we gather today, let us pause for just a moment as we turn to someone near us and ask that person to be our prayer partner for our Mass today. So as now in the presence of our merciful and loving God, let us ask God to grant us pardon and forgiveness for our sins. Lord, you are Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you live in your church in word and in sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And my almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever.
from the prophet Isaiah. About Zion, I will not be silent. About Jerusalem, I will not grow weary. Until her integrity shines out like the dawn and her salvation flames like a torch. The nations then will see your integrity. All the kings your glory and you will be called by a new name. One which the mouth of the Lord will confer. You are to be crowned of splendour in the hand of the Lord. A princely diadem in the hand of your God. No longer are you to be named forsaken, nor your land abandoned. But you shall be called my delight, and your land the wedded. For the, late, for the Lord takes delight in you, and your land will be heavy sweating. Like a young man marrying a virgin, so will the one who built you will wed you. And as the bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so will your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O oh, sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. Worship the Lord in his temple. O earth, tremble before him. Proclaim to the nations, God is king. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. The first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same spirit. There are all sorts of services to be done, but always the same Lord. Working in all sorts of different ways, in different people. It is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. One may have the gift of preaching with wisdom given to him by the Spirit. Another may have the gift of preaching with instruction given to him by the same Spirit. And another gift of faith given by the same Spirit. And another, the gift of healing. Through, through this one Spirit, one, the power of miracles, another, a prophecy, and another, the gift of recognising spirits. And another, the gift of tongues. And another, to ability, the ability to interpret them. All these are the work of the one of the same spirit, who distributes the different gifts, different people, just as he chooses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. has called us with the gospel to share in his glory of God, Jesus Christ. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said, Woman, why turn to me? My hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. There were six stone water jars standing there, meant for the ablutions that are customary among the Jews. Each could hold 20 or 30 gallons. 
Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water and take it to the, fill the jars with water and they filled them to the brim. Draw some out now, he told them, and take it to the steward. They did this. The steward tasted the water and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said, people generally serve the best wine first and keep the cheaper sort till the guests have had plenty to drink. But you have kept the best wine till now. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to talk today about gifts and I think on the perfect and beautiful day that we have started out with today, it's a very appropriate subject but it's about what is a gift and what do we see as a gift and my nephew is getting married in March this year and his fiancée was having a bridal shower this weekend which led me to be privy to a conversation between my mother and my wife on what gift they should get for her. Now, this is what they call nowadays a themed party, and therefore the gift had to correspond to the theme. But at one stage during the conversation, I heard my mother say quite clearly, I know what I would like to give her, but it would not suit the theme. And is this not the way with gifts nowadays? Because if you think back over all the gifts you have been given over your lifetime and bring to mind those times that you actually unwrapped your gift and found it to be exactly what you needed. And note that I specifically stated what you needed rather than what you wanted. For a lot of times it is only in reflection that you even realise how much you did need the gift you had been given. And it may not have been what you actually wanted. So take the next step and think about the times that a note from an old friend you had not seen for a long time. Or a hug from someone who you knew could not necessarily afford to buy something nice. Or maybe a smile or a wave from the neighbour down the street who remembered it was your birthday. All these gifts and some, are sometimes worth so much more than anything money could actually buy. Most times, just knowing that someone cares is probably the greatest gift you can get. So with this in mind, we look at our second reading today from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, when he tells us about the variety of gifts that all come from the Spirit, the same Spirit. He, of course, is writing to the church in Corinth, so it is homing in on the gift that they needed to recognise in each other for the upkeep of that community. Preaching, instructions, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, recognising spirits, tongues and the ability to interpret. But these are only the surface of the many gifts that God has endowed us with. But whatever the gift, there is always that same constant, that these are all gifts given by the same Spirit, and not because we asked for them, but because the Spirit chose to give them to us. The Spirit knows what it is that we need rather than what we actually want. Now, Paul tells us that the Lord is working in all of us, using our gifts. For the gifts of the Spirit given to each person 
is solely for a good purpose. So once again, have a look back in your own lives, however long or short that may have been, and reflect on those times when someone had thanked you for something you did for them. And you may not have even realised that you had done it. And this includes even your spouses or partners in life, your teachers or your bosses, your employees or your very extended family, your neighbours, whatever form that may take, or even perfect strangers. You probably didn't even realise you were using your gifts, for it is God who knows what you need and when you will need it. Now, in our first reading, we heard of Jerusalem, which was the centre of Jewish religion, or the gift of God to Jewish religion. Or as Isaiah says, you are to be the crown of splendour in the hand of the Lord, a princely diadem in the hand of your God, a great city of God. Of course, our Jerusalem is our church. Christ Church, who put it in place so that we, in the words of Isaiah, are no longer forsaken, but are God's delight. A community where we all use our gifts for the benefit of all. This is what occurred at the wedding feast at Cana. For weddings in those days were much longer and much more about right procedures than they are today. People then did not generally bring actual wedding gifts, but they would give by helping out with the celebrations, with the food, with the drinks, whatever was needed. And this was always in high demand because these weddings could last up to seven days. Of course, this puts loads of pressure on the groom's parents to ensure everyone had plenty and enjoyed themselves. A failure in any form of correctness could lead to a losing of face and prestige in the community. And this was to be avoided in a society where position was so important. So yes, running out of wine was an absolute no-no and would be devastating to the groom's parent and extended family. But like all situations in life back then and even in our lives today, God is with us, sharing his gifts with us. The difference on this occasion at the wedding is that God is physically at the wedding in the form of Jesus, who, by the way, was invited to be there and has turned up with a few of his disciples, mostly to enjoy the celebration. But at the wedding... Jesus' mother asks for Jesus' help. She tells him that the wine has run out. She does not tell him what to do, but asks him to do something. We all know now that this leads to the great sign of Christ fulfilling his destiny by bringing a new wine, a new way of living to the people. But it was he who determined that this is what was needed so that others may come to believe. So to accomplish this, he needed others to use their gifts. His mother, who knew who to turn to when it was necessary. The servants who obeyed without questioning. And even the observance of the disciples to discern the actual message behind this great sign. And as many have said and written about over the years, Jesus did not need to create more wine as there were numerous other ways that a Messiah could have altered the celebrations of the wedding so as not to bring condemnation on the groom's family. But Jesus did what was needed, a bigger need than just a miracle. The need that accomplished all that was required without many at the wedding actually even knowing what had happened. But what we can say is that our church community here today 
is just like that wedding feast in Cana. For like the wedding feast, we have all come together to celebrate with words and songs. We had the wedding vows in the form of our scriptures and our gospels. We had the wedding feast in the form of our Eucharist. And as participants in the wedding, we are all using our spirit-given gifts to enhance this celebration and by doing so have extended that invitation to Christ to be present with us. So what we need to do is recognise, just like Mary, the mother of Jesus, did, that Jesus is the ultimate gift and simply say to him, Lord, we need your help. And during these uncertain times, we are now actually experiencing, we must learn to recognise our God-given gifts and use them to build and support our church community as well as those outside our community. But most importantly, we must turn to Christ and ask him for his help, for you may rest assured that he knows what we need. Together let us make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My friends, God the Holy Spirit works in different ways in each one of us. As we bring our petitions to the Lord, we ask for help to live out our call to be faithful to the gospel. For the church, that it will continue to bring the message of God's merciful love to the minds and hearts of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For couples preparing for marriage, may they be ready to live fully the commitment they will make to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, that the Lord who was present at the marriage in Cana will be with them in the joys and the struggles of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith, may we recognise our diverse gifts and support each other to use them well. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in body, mind or spirit, including all those mentioned in our newsletter and all for whom our prayers have been requested, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased family members, relatives and friends, especially Father Peter Rankin, Sue Thwaites and Peter Williams, recently deceased, and all those whose anniversaries we remember. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our own intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our prayer partner. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray together the plenary council prayer. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit of Pentecost. Come, come Holy Spirit of the great Southland. O God, bless and unite all your people in Australia, 
and guide us on the pilgrim way of the plenary council. Give us the grace to see your face to one another and to recognize Jesus, our companion on the road. Give us the courage to tell our stories and to speak boldly of your truth. Give us ears to listen humbly to each other and a discerning heart to hear what you are saying. Guide your church into a hope-filled future that we may live the joy of the gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord, bread for the journey from age to age. Amen. Our Lady, help of Christians, pray for us. St. Mary MacKillop, pray for us. with justice to love tenderly and to walk humbly with our God to walk humbly with our God we are companions on the journey breaking bread and sharing life and in the love we bear is the hope we share for we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, through Christ your Son. For out of compassion for the waywardness of that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. 
For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Julian, our Bishop, and all those who are called to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles saint aloysius and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. I can have the pigs as well. Away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of all the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour on us, Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with us as we say the Synod Prayer. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. For you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful, do not promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, for ever and ever. Amen. There's lot, not a lot of extra news this weekend, just the normal news that's in the newsletter, because January is a quiet time, there's not a lot happening. However, we will be having um, a Mass at Flower Pot on the first weekend of February at 2pm. That's the 55th anniversary of Black Tuesday or Ash Wednesday, whatever. Was it called Black Tuesday? Yeah. I can't remember now. I'm getting it was Black Tuesday. was Black Tuesday, yeah. So we will have that Mass on that Sunday at Flower Pot at 2 p.m. at the cemetery. So that notice about that will be in the uh, area newsletters and area kind of uh, confirmation, but it will also be in the newsletter in the next couple of weeks. So please take care while you know, this is a lovely day. As Mick said, there is much to give thanks to God for. We have a wonderful gift, and it will be even better if we get the palms out real quick. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Matthew says it. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodness in your own wisdom, and to be found your faithful. Knows his love is forever faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him and real music, worship him and bless his name. Power he has yielded. Family is his garment, risen from the snares of death. His word he has spoken, one word he has broken, new life he now gives to all. Now a new nation, sing of the Lord's goodness, deeds of praise and thanks to God. 